Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. In the last video, we talked about the proper method and the proper testing procedure to make sure that your refilled Pro 100 CLI 42 carts are feeding that printer the correct volume and rate of ink to keep it happy and keep it from burning out that printhead. So there are various methods to refill your cart once you have modified it, okay? Here I have a black, CLI-42 cartridge it has been fully flushed and is ready to be refilled. You would attach a clip, you would remove the refill plug, put it someplace convenient, and now you either use a syringe, you can do that very easily, a syringe, insert the needle in there, refill, let it absorb the sponge, and end up topping it off to the 80% from the top level plug it, let it sit for a while to equalize, and you're ready to use it after you have tested the flow characteristics of that cartridge, especially the one that you flushed out like this one needs to be really tested thoroughly before you insert it back into the printer. And then once you have done so, go ahead and top it back off because you will have wasted a couple of ml worth of ink. Now, one other method that is very convenient because if you use syringes, guess what you gotta do afterwards? You gotta wash them. What a pain in the butt if you gotta do eight, 10, 12 of those. So why not just use a squeezy bottle? Now these little bottles can be purchased through Precision Colors, many other vendors, and also scientific type companies. You can buy these bottles, they come with a lure tip cap. You can attach any kind of blunt needle to it. And simply, you're just going to do this. You're going to insert it. I'm not gonna actually fill this, but you would flip it straight up. I don't want to drip anything, so I'm not going to go beyond that. And then squeeze in the ink now. These types of bottles, very pliable, okay, very pliable. If I was to hold it upside down, it would drip. So Precision Colors came up with a slightly different idea. Why not use the regular current hard bottle, such as this one? This is normally what they pack their ink in. So he was able to find some matching caps. And of course, this is the one that ink comes in. You would need an O-ring to be able to seal that. Now these caps have a little ring built in internally. I don't know if you can see that at all. You probably cannot, but take my word for it. So here's one that has not been used. There's a ring in there. And now when you insert the matching O-ring, you will receive right here. And these were researched up and down. He went literally locally to a provider and tested these O-rings. So they have to be inserted so that they are flush. Now, they're not gonna lock in place. Don't get me wrong. They are not going to lock in place, but you gotta make sure that they're not kinked or they're not actually sitting on top of that ridge. If they're sitting on top of that ridge, it's not gonna seal at all. Once you get that done, and I have one here that I just popped in, take my word for it right there, I'm gonna go ahead and place it on my bottle. And I'm gonna squeeze. And it should be fine, I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna give it one more twist. All right, now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually, I don't have a needle with me except for that one, I don't wanna use that because that's dirty. I'm gonna put my finger on it. People are complaining that they're leaking completely when they turn around, when they turn it upside down. When they squeeze, they leak. I'm squeezing as hard as I can. No leaks. Now, what if I hold it upside down? You get one drop, almost wanting to come out. Almost one, but then it stops. So you would never want to do this anyway. You always want to insert like this and then flip it upside down very carefully. That way you get, you'll get absolutely no, no drips. This type of bottle, because it's soft and pliable, will drip, drip. The minute I turn it upside down, it will drip. And I'm not going to demonstrate that because I, don't, I want to keep my floor clean. But anyway, just want to show you guys that if you do this correctly, you literally can squeeze as hard as you can. Now, let, let me show you. There's water coming out. You see, that's just plain water. Squeeze as hard as you can, and there's no leakage. 
around that cap. You got to make sure that you load that O-ring correctly. Okay, this system works unless you load it wrong, unless you do it wrong. Oh my gosh, boy, have I heard stories after story after story, and it all boils down to that. Listen, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Again, let me just show you. See that? No leaking. Now, let me remove it one more time. You might say, well, you know, this is, this is a trick. No, it's not a trick. Let me see if I can take the O-ring out. No, it's pretty much stuck in there now. We'll do another one here. Here's the uh, the one with the uh, needle attached and the O-ring is in there. Let me make sure. Yep, we've got an O-ring in there. I'll attach it. And you can feel it. You can actually go about an eighth of a turn, flip it upside down, squeeze, absolutely no water coming out. I didn't want to take a chance with black ink because, you know, in case, I screwed up and did not load that O-ring properly, we would indeed have a leak. Now, let me hold this upside down. With the actual needle attached, you get no leakage. And this was a problem that people were also reporting. Of course, if we have a leaky cap, water will just, in this case, water, but in most cases, it would be ink. And as you can see, I'm barely getting a little droplet. By that point, I'm already done filling my cartridge. And again, you would never, never load it this way. You want to load it at an angle, at an angle. Put it in there. Make sure that the end of the needle is already inside that cartridge fill port. If it's a CLI-42, make sure that it's already inside there before you get it to the vertical position. Then squeeze, drop after drop after drop. And then when it is full, again, tilt it slightly and remove it so that you don't get any ink all over yourself. And besides, a little bit of ink is the sign of a refiller. You got to have ink-stained fingers. There's a guy that goes by that name in one of the forums, and he's very proud of that. So again, make sure your O-rings are attached correctly. These are great, but again, they're leaky as can be, and not because of the uh, cap nut sealing, but because they're so pliable. And if you do it the way I told you not to do it, you will leak ink all over you. Because if I turn this upside down, it's just going to start dripping. Oh, might as well show you. Hang on a second. Might as well show you. See all that ink leaking? Look at that. Just from the weight of the ink alone. So not good. Not good at all. And this is a good uh, sealing cap as well but these are even better but these people are having problems with and I don't get it whatsoever I just don't get it it should not be causing any kind of problems once you install those correctly in fact that is what they are using to refill these cartridges with the same actual bottle a four ounce bottle filled with 82 ml of ink and a special tip attached to one of these caps and you use it to vacuum fill or pressure fill your cartridges. Actually, these right here. These very carts right here. So, again, if you're getting leaks all over the place, you install that O-ring wrong. Okay, it's not going to come pre-installed. They cannot do everything for you. You have to make sure that you do that yourself correctly. That's all I can tell you. I have not had a single leak since I started doing this and I started using this new product. At first I thought, oh, wow, why did you go and change that again? Then I realized, wait a minute, this is actually better. And it seems to work better, especially for this process right here of filling these types of bottles. Although I also use a syringe for that. But still, most people don't want to buy a 100 ml syringe, right? It's too costly. Anyway, so that is it. Let's go ahead and plug this back up. We'll pop it right back up here where it came from. And I will bid you goodbye. Take a look at this. I've been printing these uh, perch sheets on this baby. And again, every two days, no cleaning cycles. But I bet you after 60 hours, bingo, cleaning cycle. So that's the way this these printers work. And to reiterate, if you go back, Two videos ago, yeah, Pro 100, 120 hours or 480 hours. 
plus a minute, it will trigger a cleaning cycle. Then the counter starts again. Nothing to do with printing or the frequency of printing. It's timed, okay? So keep that in mind. But with a Pro 100, it's not that bad. It really does not use up that much ink. All right, that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Keep subscribing, sharing, and liking. As always, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.